Hello, and welcome back to the All Girls Matter Self-Esteem Academy presented to you by Harvest Girls International. My name is Nichelle Miller, or you can refer to me as Miss Nichelle, and I am your lead facilitator, and I will be guiding you on today's journey. I'm so excited that you joined us, and I hope that you have registered and printed out today's worksheet because you will need it as we go throughout today's session. If you have not, please take the time to click the link below and go ahead and go online and get registered so that you can get the worksheet and all the materials for today's class. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. If it's not your first time, then welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Please make sure you're telling your friends and family about us so that they can join us. This program is geared towards girls ages nine through 17, but we always welcome parents. So parents, please stay and enjoy this journey with us. Today, we are talking about a very special topic and one that is near and dear to me, and it is about embracing your inner power, okay? Um, before we get to all of that, I wanna tell you last month's winner, and that is Jaleesa R. And she won because she just completed the worksheet and sent it back to us. That's all you have to do. Everyone that does that is entered into a drawing. And sometimes we pick one winner, sometimes we pick more than one. So please make sure to complete the worksheet and send it back to the email that is in your instructions. Any questions? No? Let's go. All right. So, oh, and before I forget, today's worksheet is due by October 31st. That gives you two weeks to complete it. Plenty of time. You can do that today. Okay. So I want to start today's session by telling you about a little story. And you may have heard it before, or you may have even seen it. So there's this girl named Dorothy, and she lives in Kansas on a farm. Nothing special about Dorothy, she's just your basic girl, lives on a farm in Kansas, and she loves her dog, Toto. Toto is a cutie, little bitty dog, so cute. So she's in love with her little dog, and they hang out and do things on the farm, because that's really her only friend. They're kind of in the middle of nowhere, um, which can feel like us right now in this time that we're in right now. But um, she's hanging out with her dog, minding her own business, Along comes this mean lady that lives down the street, riding her bike, and she is just insistent that the dog has been all over her yard and messing with her stuff, and she wants the um, aunt and uncle, who Dorothy lives with, to get rid of the dog. And so Dorothy's trying to hide the dog, and she's trying to get away, and she, she, you know, she wants to keep her dog, that's her only friend, and she's telling all the people on the farm that work there about how horrible this lady is. She's kind of the neighborhood meanie. I'm sure you all have one. Okay. So she's telling them about it. They're all busy working and they're like, oh, go, we're, we're busy working, go on somewhere. So Dorothy's got kind of hanging out. Well, then all of a sudden the storm comes. So this huge tornado, and if you're from the Midwest, you're familiar with tornadoes, um, comes swirling around and it's knocking everything around like crazy. And a shingle, which is kind of this decorative piece on the outside of the house, flies, hits Dorothy in the head. I mean, just clunks her, okay? Don't. So Dorothy's like passed out sleeping and she ends up dreaming. Now, I need to tell you this as well. When the story starts, it's all in black and white. And for those of you younger people, you probably wonder what black and white is. It's a filter on your phone, you can find it, okay? Um, so everything's in black and white. Well, when Dorothy wakes up in this dream, everything is in color, these bright, beautiful, amazing colors. So she wakes up and Toto's there, of course, her best friend and she doesn't know where she is. So everything's in these beautiful colors. She's trying to figure out where she is and she's looking around and people are trying to figure out who she is because she doesn't belong there. And they're kind of giggling and like, who is she? Because she's taller than them and it's kind of crazy. Then all of a sudden comes this beautiful bubble. It's this beautiful pink bubble floats down and this beautiful lady Glinda's inside and she's like oh welcome you're amazing we thank you and Dorothy's like thank me for what well in the middle of the tornado Dorothy's house landed on somebody and sp splatted them not often that houses land on people but in Dorothy's dream in Dorothy's story she landed on um, somebody and splatted them and they turn and look and this person that she squished is wearing these beautiful ruby slippers so for those of you kind of picturing this these gorgeous red sequin shoes okay they're gorgeous high heels not too high beautiful shoes everybody would want to wear them j-lo would want them beyonce would want them so these beautiful shoes so all of a sudden everybody freaks out because another mean lady comes in so you remember the mean lady from dorothy's world so this mean lady comes in 
and she wants the shoes and she wants to know who smooshed her sister with the house because that was her sister and Dorothy smushed her. She didn't mean to, but it happened, okay? So she smushed her sister, she wants the shoes. Glenda says, nope, you can't have the shoes because they go to Dorothy, she smushed her and all of a sudden the shoes are on Dorothy's feet. Dorothy's freaking, she doesn't even want the shoes. She just wants to go home. Um, and so now the sister's mad. For you. you smushed my sister and you took my shoes, okay? We can relate. If you have sisters, you know this happens or brothers or people that take your stuff. So now she's mad. So Dorothy's just wanting to go home. And she's like, how can I just, get, I just want to go home. Please just tell me how to go home. So Glenda, who's so elegant and fabulous, and she's a queen and you know, queens are amazing. Um, she tells her, just follow the yellow brick road. So throughout this land, there's a street that's golden. It's all made of yellow brick, right? So Dorothy's skipping along and she just wants, she just wants to go home. And she meets a scarecrow and she meets a tin man and she meets a lion. And so they're skipping along the road together because when she met Glenda and the gang, they told her if she followed the yellow brick road, she would meet the Wizard of Oz. And he was the smartest man in the world and he could do anything. And if anybody could get her home, he could get her home. So they're all skipping along and they're trying to find the wizard. And all these things happen to them along the way. And the mean lady that wants the shoes is attacking them and throwing hate and throwing shade and, you know, all the things that happen to us today. Um, and, and they just want to, they just want things like Dorothy wants to go home. The scarecrow just wants a brain. The tin man just wants a heart so he can love someone. And the lion just wants courage because he's scared of everything. Okay. So they finally, after all this ruckus, and this takes about two hours in the movie. <gasps> It's a movie, I said it was a story. Okay, it's a movie. Um, and they finally get to the wizard and they're like, hey, these are the things we want, help us. And he's like, uh, yeah, about that. Um, okay, here's what I can do. Um, I can give you this and this and this. And he gives them these things. And Dorothy's like, well, what about me? I just wanna go home. And he tells her, well, I have this hot air balloon. I can take you up in that and get you home. So they get in the balloon and it fails. Dorothy's still stuck and she's so upset. She did everything she was supposed to do and she just wants to go home. So along comes Glenda, again, the queen to save the day, right? And she says, everything you need to get home is already inside of you. You didn't need the Wizard of all at all. Why she didn't tell her this at the beginning of the story, nobody knows, okay? So all she has to do is click her heels together three times, close her eyes, and she'll get home. And she has to say, there's no place like home. So she closes her eyes and she says, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. And she clicks her heels and voila, she's home. What was the point of that story, you're wondering? Everything she needed was already inside of her. And today we are talking about everything you need is already inside of you. We're talking about your inner power, girls. Ah, see how that links together? Okay, first of all, let's talk about power. Power is seen as force. If someone's powerful, you picture them as very strong, very forceful. So power is a force. Your inner force is your inner power. Okay, your inner force is your ability to do things, um, to press forward, and basically to make the world a better place. And that's on your, your worksheet. We talk about the definition of that. So how do you tap into that? Do I even have it? You're probably thinking, I don't even know if I have any inner power, Miss Michelle. What are you talking about? So the way that you tap into that, we're going to walk through that really quickly. And I have to watch our time because we don't have a lot of time. I know you guys have other things to do today. Okay. So I want you to think really quickly, and it's, I want you to use your worksheet for this. Um, start with where you're the strongest. And I really want you to put some thought into this. I want you to think about what you are very, very good at. What someone could ask you to do, and you're like, oh, I can do that. I can do that with my eyes closed. And for some of you, it could be a sport. It could be your um, grades. It could be helping mom with with chores or a sibling. It could be taking care of other people. It, I mean, it can be a variety of things, but I want you to think what you're the best at. And I want you to take a second and write that down. I'll wait. Okay. And I want you to think about um, how good you feel when you do that, do that thing, 
knowing that you're good at it, okay? So sometimes when we feel good or we feel confident or we feel really strong, it can be for a variety of reasons. It can be something that we know that we're amazing at. We know that we can do that better than anybody else that we know. Sometimes it's an outfit. Sometimes you put on your outfit and you have picked it out from head to toe. You've picked out your necklace, your earrings, your accessories, and you know you have got it going on and nobody can tell you anything that day with that outfit. Sometimes it's that. That makes you feel powerful and confident. Sometimes it's an activity, like I said, a sport. Um, I know some of you are amazing gymnasts. Um, some of you are, um, I'm thinking cheerleaders and basketball players. And I know we have some track stars. Um, we have, you girls have so many amazing abilities and gifts that you are good at that you probably think nothing about because it's just easy for you. It just comes to you. You don't even have to really work at it, okay? So I want you to think of some of those things. And sometimes what pumps you up or makes you feel powerful can be a song. So for me, um, it can be, it, for me, one of my, my favorites is Beyonce, who runs the world. Girls, of course we do. Um, <laughs> so think about what your, your thing is, what, what thing you are good at that no one else is good at, or that when you do that thing, you feel so good and nobody can tell you otherwise. Nobody can tell you you're not good at it. Nobody can tell you you're not a star, nothing. Okay, did you write that down? You might have a couple more, make sure you write them all down. And you might think of some when this is over, that's okay, okay. So that's your thing, that's your superpower. That propels you forward, okay? That's your gift. So inside of that, I want you to think about what five things make this your thing. So for example, if it is, I'll say tumbling, um, maybe because you can stick a vault like nobody else, or you can you know, score tens on the balance beam, or whatever it may be, I want you to think about five things that make that your thing, that, that make it just your, your jam, okay? And write those five things down. Write them down. Do you have a pen? You didn't bring a pen? Get a pen. Oh, wait. Okay. So we've thought about things that are our jam, things that are just so easy to us, takes no effort at all. Yes. And we've thought about why those five things are just so easy and effortless to us. Okay. Now, I want you to switch gears for a minute. I want you to think about, if you can five, if not less than five is okay, I want you to think about something that you're not, um, not so great at, something that doesn't make you feel your best. And it could be getting up in front of the class to give a speech or um, trying out for a new sport or moving to a new school and making new friends or I'm trying to think of something else. About sports. Or like you putting your name in the hat for class president or something like that. I want you to think of something where you don't feel your best or you don't feel that you're the best at it and write that down. If you can think of five things, great. If not, and don't say nothing because everyone has something that they don't feel so great about doing. Everybody, trust me, everybody. Even Beyonce, I know, she's pretty amazing. Even Venus and Serena Williams, superstar tennis players. Everybody has something that they don't feel great at. And even if they are great at it, sometimes they don't feel like they're so great. So, so write down the things that you don't feel good about. Okay. Now, how can you, I want you to take your list of things you're great at and what makes you so great at them. And your list of things you're not so great at. And I want you to think about how you can use the skills that make you really great at those things and apply them to the things that you're not so good at. So for example, maybe you're a cheerleader and you are cheer captain and you're good at it because you have leadership skills, because you can remember all the cheers, because you are great at hyping up a crowd, but you don't feel like you're good at public speaking. So how can you use that cheerleading skill with your public speaking. Hmm. Well, you're already public speaking by being a cheerleader. You're in the public, right? 
and you already remember things so you could remember your speeches and you're good at hyping up a crowd so you can use that energy when you give a public speech so there's ways that you can take everything that you are really good at and apply those abilities to things that you don't feel good at and sometimes we have to remind ourselves of the things that we're really good at when we're doing something that makes us feel kind of yucky or kind of nervous or anxious. And that's called tapping into your inner power. Tapping into, girl, I have it going on. Girl, remember when I wore that outfit with those shoes and everybody was like, oh, girl, you look so good. Well, today I'm wearing this. I don't know, but I know I looked good yesterday. So I, have, I still have it going on. I do. So you have to remind yourself of that. That's tapping into your inner power. And it doesn't happen overnight. And it's not a one and done. It's not something you do one time and you're done with it. It's just not. And even for adults, it happens through practice. Okay? So how do you practice? I'm going to give you three easy steps. One, you get in the mirror. It feels weird, I know. You get in the mirror and you tell yourself how amazing you are and you tell yourself what you're good at, and you tell yourself that you are going to be the best you at everything that you try, okay? Do we succeed at everything? No, no way. If we did, we'd all be gazillionaires and president and on the Kardashians and doing all the things, but that's not what we're supposed to be doing, okay? We all have our own gifts and abilities, and that's what makes us so great. There's only one you. There's only one Miss Nichelle. There's only one of each of us, and we all have our own inner powers, and we all have our own abilities. So what you have to do is get in that mirror. Hey, girl, how you doing? I'm good, girl. How are you? And tell yourself you are amazing, and tell yourself what you're good at every single day. And sometimes it's more than once a day. Sometimes I have events and things going on and I have to remind myself before I go on. And you guys, I tell you what, I am a nervous Nelly and I will sweat and be freaked out and my heart's racing and I do it and I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I've done that before, but I still get a little anxious and that's normal. That's human. It's okay. So you still have to get in the mirror, tell yourself how amazing you are and tell yourself you're going to be the best you at everything possible. Okay, step one. Step two, study your craft. If there's something that you want to do or something that you don't feel strong in, study that. If there's someone, like say for example, you wanna be a better gymnast or you wanna be a better cheerleader or you wanna be a better track runner and you see people doing those things at the ability or the level that you wanna do it, ask them. Ask those people, hey, how did you get to that level? They could be practicing five times a week and you only practice three. Maybe you need to practice a little more. They could be, you know, racing every day or trying to push their, shave their time off by a second every day. Ask them, okay? If it's someone that you are unable to make face-to-face -face contact with, maybe it's, you know, a celebrity or, or someone of that nature, that's okay. Study them, study what they do, research them. Where people are, where you see them in success is not where they started. It takes work. You know, it's like when you're digging for gold, you have to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. And usually when you're ready to give up is when you're going to find it. So don't give up. You have to work your craft. People will only see the successful pieces. They don't see all the work behind the scenes. And that's okay because that's your inner power that you're fine tuning. You're kind of buffing it like you're buffing jewelry or buffing a diamond or buffing, buffing something shiny. You have, to, you have to polish that. You have to polish your craft, so study it, okay? Study it and practice. One, get in that mirror, tell yourself how amazing you are. We call that an affirmation. You know, I believe in me, I am amazing, I am powerful, I am strong. I can do X, Y, Z. That's where you start. Two, study your craft. There's something you want to be better at, something you want to do, a new skill you want to acquire, study it. And we live in such an amazing time. We have YouTube to teach us skills. You know, we have books online. We have books being, you can get a book read to you. You don't even have to read the book. It's amazing. Study your craft. If you want it, you'll find a way to get it, okay? And number three, the most important step 
to being powerful, to having this inner power, to having this ability, excuse me, is to help other people. What? How's that helping me? Helping other people? What are you talking about, Miss Michelle? Help other people. Because when you get better at something, there's somebody that's watching you that wants to be where you are. So you help them. If they ask you for help, you help them. If you see someone struggling, you help them. If you have a um, need in your community to volunteer and help out, you help them. Why? Because that helps make you feel good. It's like a little deposit into your heart. And when your heart is feeling good, that's boosting your confidence. That's boosting your power. And that's boosting your, yeah, I can do this ability. And you're going to go out and crush it. Okay. So three steps to really tapping into your inner power. Once you figured out what you're amazing at, and you figured out what makes you so amazing and how you can apply that to other things. And you're gonna review this because it's gonna change and it's you're gonna find new things and, and abilities, it's gonna be amazing. Then you're gonna get in that mirror every day or even before you get out of bed, just lay there, kind of look at the ceiling and be like, girl, you are amazing. And you can even talk back to yourself, thanks girl, I know. Or, or kind of hype yourself up. You have to be a hype woman for yourself. So I want you to hype yourself up, young ladies. Hype, hype, hype. And if you have an amazing hype cheer, please email it to me. I want to hear it. I want to hear what you say to yourself. That's, um, that's incredible. Two, study your craft. And three, help someone else. That's tapping into your inner power and paying it forward. It's an amazing gift, ladies. So um, thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you gained something from this. I hope that you complete the worksheet. There's a couple things on the worksheet that I did not talk about in the video, and that was on purpose because I want you to look at the worksheet, okay? And I want you to complete the worksheet and send it back to me by October 31st. That gives you two weeks, and everyone that completes it will be entered into a drawing for a prize from me, and I will announce you on the next video. Please, if you have not already, please click like and subscribe to our channel and tell other people about us because we wanna share this with as many people as we can. I want you to be gifted, I want you to be strong, and I want you to be powerful by tapping into your inner power. I wish you the best day ever and I hope that you come back and see me next month and I hope that I'm announcing your name for the prize. So have a great day, thanks for tuning, with us, tuning in with us and I will see you in a month, but I will see your worksheets within two weeks, right? Have a great day, girls, bye-bye.